A number of potential updates to the NHS's contact tracing app have been accidentally leaked online. The classified document was seen after the government inadvertently left the document open to public access. It claims that the app could prompt users to input even more personal data, including demographic information. Currently, it only asks for the first part of a user's postcode, but the document hints this might change in the future. It also outlines the potential introduction of a COVID-19 status in order to inform other users whether a person is sick or isolating. And a future version could ask for continuous location data. NHS X says that the app doesn't track your location and any future updates will be communicated to the public. The NHS COVID-19 app has been designed to protect users' privacy while tackling the spread of infection and could be a key tool to help government manage the pandemic and save lives. It does not track location or store any personal information. The app only asks for the first half of a user's postcode, and if any changes are made in future versions of the app, they will be fully explained to users and uptake will remain entirely voluntary. It comes as the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, confirmed the app will be fully rolled out in England by next week. It's currently being trialled on the Isle of Wight in the south of England, and Hancock has claimed the trial has gone well so far. Well, for more on this, I'm now joined by data privacy expert Jamal Ahmed. Jamal, good to see you. Now, the NHS says that any changes will be publicised. So does that reassure you? It doesn't actually reassure me in the least, um, Bill. Um, the problem we see with this app is the government want to centralise all of the data that they collect um, into one central location. Now, the problem with that is myself and other privacy professionals have already signed a petition to the government saying we're really worried about purpose creep. Now, this government that can't even keep its own documents safe, we had the New Year's owners uh, leak a few months ago, and now we've seen uh, confidential documents leaked on uh, or left open on a Google Drive. How can we trust this government to protect all of that data about every single person that's going to use this app in a central location, where they've been, who they might have been with, what happens if it gets into the wrong hands? But more importantly than that, what we're worried about is purpose creep, is what else might the government be using this for? And from the documents that were labelled confidential that were left in that Google Drive, we can see that they have some updates that they're planning to collect more information, such as demographics. Um, and who knows what else they might be wanting to collect. But the question is, how will this benefit the government in fighting against COVID-19? Why do you need demographic information for that? The problem we see with this app, however, is, first of all, it's voluntary, meaning that not everyone has to use it. Um, it's only for people that choose to use it. And even then, from the trials that have taken place in the Isle of Wight, we know there are a lot of technical problems and people with devices older than two years old can't actually use the app on the device. So it's as, use, as useful as a um, chocolate teapot. OK, the then, moment. do you think we should go back to the drawing board, take the approach that other countries have using the Apple Google model, which is decentralised? Uh, what, what, what's the difference and what's the benefit of being decentralised? So the benefit is of it being decentralised is that when you think of that, about the principles of privacy by design and default, that information is more private. Rather than it all coming into one place, it stays on people's phone, it's decentralised. So the data that could come into the hands of the wrong person is limited to what's on each specific device. And even in that case, the data is often pseudonymized, so you can't actually track who it's coming from. By centralizing the information of the population of the whole of the United Kingdom into one place, it, 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 it sends alarm bells ringing. But NHSX, they, they, they say that people will remain anonymous and it will not track location data. But why shouldn't we be convinced by that? So I think the problem here is the confidence that we have in the NHS and the understanding of the terms like anonymous. Now, anonymous data means there is no way of identifying who that is. But if we look at the DPIA, um, the Data Protection Impact Assessment that they've done, we can see that that data can actually be reversed if they wanted to, and it can be located back to a specific person, which means that data is not anonymous. At best, it's pseudonymous data. But of course, the app is essential, isn't it, to getting the country back to normal. And don't you think that generally the, the majority of the population will do all it can to help the government and take part with this app? You say, yes, it is voluntary. But do you think there will be a big take up of this because of the crisis we're facing? Or do you think people really will hold back because of your concerns? 
So this is the problem, Bill. I mean, I remember coming um, onto your show about a month ago and really advocating for tracking and tracing. Now, the problem, the problem here is twofold. The first thing is the government hasn't done enough testing of people to find out who is at risk and who isn't. So without that, the tracing becomes useless. There's so many people walking around and they don't know if they're carrying the virus or if they could be spreading it to other people or not. The second problem is this app is reliant on Bluetooth technology. So for people to be able to use this app, they need to have a device that's less than two years old, first of all, which is rules out a lot of the population already. And then it only works if you come into contact with somebody who has been tested and they say they're, um, they, they've they updated their status and they have to say that they've been positive. If you come within six feet of them for 15 minutes or longer. Now, water droplets that travel in our mouths and that travel, have, it, they don't need 15 minutes for you to contract the virus. It could happen just if you spend five minutes uh, within the vicinity of that person. So I think it's going. To, it's, it's quite worrying and quite concerning that people might download this up and be lulled into a false sense of security. Jamal, thank you very much indeed for talking to us today. Thank you.